Um, the second question, you know, they all they both tie together just a little bit. But uh, the question is, does having a gun make you safe? I did a um, a Facebook post recently, the sappy Facebook post that no one wanted to know who I was when I did that Facebook post. But anyway, um, talking about does having a gun make you safe? And my thoughts on that during during that post were um I feel like people go out and they purchase guns and they have a false sense of security about it. That was really the point I was trying to make um, when I was talking about that. And, um, and, and having a gun doesn't make you safe. It, it's a tool that you can use that can help you be safe. But the only thing that really makes you safe is you and, uh, and having the wherewithal and the training to, you know, put yourself in the best possible position that you can to defend yourself or keep yourself away from situations where you think you might get yourself in trouble. Just having a brain and common sense really goes a long way. And as one of my friends says, Trish, you know, this friend, he says that um, common sense is not something that grows in everyone's garden. <laughs> and that's always stuck with me. And I believe it's true, but I also uh, added in my notes here. Does have, so here's my question to you. If you think having a gun makes you safe, does having a horse make you a cowboy? <laughs> I'm cracking myself up, guys. Like, I don't even have good jokes, but it's true. Like, I, I swear I see people all the time and go out and buy a horse and they think the next day they're a cowboy or they buy the hat and they think they're a cowboy. I mean, there's a reason for the saying, all, all hat and no cattle, right? Um, it, it's, you know, and then the other thing is everyone wants to be a cowboy until it's time to do cowboy stuff, <laughs> right? Have you guys ever heard that? Maybe you're not in the horse world, but anyway, that's a real thing. Um, but that's what I mean by uh, does having a gun make you safe? You know, in many circumstances, I think having a gun could make you less safe. And we talked about the proper training and understanding that goes uh, along with that. And, you know, having a false sense of security. I don't know how many times I've met people that I've talked to about about having guns and, and they say, you know, well, I have a gun here and I have a gun there. Like they have a gun everywhere. I'm not opposed to that, guys. Totally not opposed to that. Um, but in, in the public realm, I wonder sometimes, are you going to is that going to do you very much good if your gun is in the glove box of your car and you need it in the grocery store? That's just my point is I think having the gun on you is probably going to serve you uh, better than uh, having it elsewhere. Just my opinion. I've I've got an opinion on everything. So and I would not even advocate for leaving your gun in your car unless it's unless it's locked up like. I, even if it's locked up, like just, it's just not a good idea. It's just, it, it's probably not going to stay in your car. Someone's probably going to take it. It's just not a good idea. Um, and if you have guns in your home, absolutely more power to you. You know, there are lots of defensive uh, tools that you should have in your home, but if you do have them, just make up the, make sure that they're locked up safely um, where people that shouldn't be getting to them, little people, especially um, can't get to them but you can quickly. Um, in my opinion, you shouldn't have all of your guns locked up downstairs in the basement in your safe that requires, you know, a lot of manual dexterity and thinking for you to get into the safe, because what if there's no time for that? You need to have an accessible uh, firearm ready to go that's not accessible to anyone else but you, but that you can get to quickly if you need to. Uh, that's my opinion. And um, again, get proper training. Does, do you guys have anything to add to that? I'll say know. something. Okay. So um, if, you, if you watch ASP, John Korea, um, he has uh, a little saying that it's basically a whoopee, a blanket, a binky. You don't have training. so. Um, if you think of it like that, that can kind of help you. It's not necessary. It is, you shouldn't only carry just because you can. You got to get that training or else that's what it is. It's just a blanket or a hammer. If you don't know how to hammer a nail, what are you going to build a house? No. So tactical will be Catherine. Nice. That's it. So I'll add to this. Um, I would love to see as many people as possible carry these, preferably with training. But 
Um, we see untrained people all the time across the U.S. with zero training whatsoever, strap the gun on, and they save life. They save their, their, their selves, somebody else's. In fact, oftentimes you see them doing so with more, um, maybe not more ability, but sometimes more accuracy, uh, more caution than even the armed professionals. And uh, so if I can encourage more people to carry, I'd do so. Um, the training is always the, the, the aspect, but uh, what I don't want to do personally is I don't want everyone to encourage somebody from not caring just because maybe they don't have training or something else, right? Because I see reports weekly of people literally, they, they literally bought a gun for the first time in their lives and they set it up and, and then they, they say they, they do something that helps them or, or saves life at the same time. <laughs> uh, the caveat to that is it seems like I see more often than not those who just go get this stuff, strap a gun on, have a gun, buy a gun, um, they, they end up, seems like they do in, end up doing catastrophic things with that gun simply out of lack of knowledge. Um, but I, I don't want to use that stupid moment of the brand new gun owner, right? Or that really, I wouldn't say stupid, the unknowing moment of that gun owner as the discouragement from having it. It really comes down to the messaging of how do we get these people to realize this. I, I've become a big fan of, of, of now starting to go to my local gun stores in, in the areas I've lived and go and look, you guys are selling these guns. Um, I'd like to, you know, whatever I can do to get you guys to promote really good training. And I try to find the good trainers in my areas, wherever I'm at. And of course, I think that includes me or anybody with defenders. But if I can find the others too and go, look, if they don't want to come see me, hey, what about these people over here? So at least, at least we're encouraging those who are behind the counter selling the gun to people to encourage them to, hey, don't just buy the gun. Now go get the training, right? Because the most important things you can invest in is actually the training. And it's not the gun, it's the training itself. But uh, the more I think that we can stop from the guns world, at least from the trainer's world, of infighting and talking about this guy's terrible and this person's bad and this and that, the more we can just encourage however we've got to people to go to further training. I think it's, that's better off from my perspective, even if that means it's not going to say the better trainers out there.